afternoon, everybody. <laughs> this press conference is being conducted in reference to a shooting incident that occurred last night, December 17, 2017, in the Harmon area. Hafiday, first and foremost, on behalf of the Guam Police Department, I would like to offer our deepest condolences to the family and friends of the two deceased victims resulting from last night's shooting incident. Our thoughts and prayers are with the family and friends during this difficult time. As you may have heard in an earlier press release, the Guam Police Department is investigating a shooting incident that occurred last night at approximately 10.30 p.m. in the area of East Taituna Road and Route 16 Army, Army Drive in Harmony. At about 10.30 p.m., the Guam Police Department responded to a 911 call for shots fired with injured persons at that location. The preliminary investigation suggests that a single male suspect targeted two other men and that this was not a random act of violence. As a result of multiple gunshot wounds, two male individuals, both of Chuki's descent, sustained life-threatening injuries. One of the male individuals was found lifeless at the scene, while the other male individual succumbed to his injuries at the Guam Regional Medical Center later that, that night. Upon the officer's arrival at the scene, they found who they believed to be the suspect relative to this incident and subsequently arrested 24-year-old Joseph Nicholas Sagdahl from Jigo for two counts of aggravated murder, two counts of possession of a deadly weapon and use of a deadly weapon, and two counts of reckless conduct. Mr. Sagdahl has been booked and confined. A handgun was found at the scene, which was registered to Mr. Sagdahl, and that handgun has been confiscated relative to this investigation. The investigation further suggests that there may have been a dispute at the Hemlani apartments between Mr. Sagdal and the victims earlier that evening. It should be noted that neither the victims nor Mr. Sagdal are residents of the Hemlani apartments in Harmon. While the arrest portion of the investigation has been turned over to the Office of the Attorney General for prosecution, this case remains open to conduct additional interviews and follow-up, and thus the details of the case cannot be released at this time. At this point, I am subject to any questions that any of the media may have. When you say this is not a random act of violence, what do you mean by that? Um, what, what we mean is that this was not an incident that uh, just sparked up. Um, this is not in any way uh, ethnic, ethnically driven. It's not a racial incident. Per se, uh, there was, we believe that there may have been an altercation that ensued while the parties were at the Hamlani apartments. Uh, we're trying to establish if, whether there were uh, um, relationships between any of the individuals. So all that we're, we're still trying to ascertain. So I just wanted to, to put out there that this is, this is not an random, a random act of violence, excuse me nor was, was this uh, ethnically or racially driven. Um, there are reports um, stating that there were a total of four victims, uh, two injured and of course the two that passed away. Um, can you confirm if that uh, report is correct? There were other individuals that were in the company of the two individuals that uh, were um, fatally injured as a result of this, this uh, incident. Um, we, we are conducting interviews relative to that, um, but there, I will tell you that there were two other individuals that were in, in the company of those two individuals that were fatally wounded. But they were not injured? They were not injured uh, as far as we know at this point in time. All right. Um, now, you mentioned earlier that they had a dispute at um, Hemlani's. Um, do you, can you identify? It, it is possible. It is, it is possible. possible that there was um, a dispute. Can you identify, um, or have you been able to identify what the relationship is between the shooters and the victims? Right now, we are, are not able to determine that. As I mentioned just a moment ago, uh, the follow-up investigations that we are conducting is to be able to determine whether there is some kind of a relationship, whether it be familial, friends, or, or, or a working relationship, what have you. That we are trying to ascertain as our detectives con uh, continue to follow up this investigation. The shooter um, utilized a handgun, um, and he is a registered owner. So um, is that an indication that this the shooter has no prior um, offenses? At this point in time, again, we're still conducting the investigation. I, did, uh, I 
based on what I have been briefed, I do not believe that there are any prior offenses. But again, the, the investigation continues to uh, be carried out. The ME already, the chief medical examiner already identified the first victim as an 18 year old. Uh, and DOE has also released information that uh, confirmed that there was a student involved. Are you able to identify the second victim? Uh, we are not able to identify that. Again, we're, the autopsy is pending uh, with the chief medical examiner. So until we get that and, and we have spoken to next of kin, then we'll be able to release the details of the victims uh, and who exactly they were. You already were alluding to it about um, the past, if you had a past. Um, what are the requirements to get a gun license or be a registered gun owner? Um, I don't have the law in front of me, um, Crystal, specifically to cite the law, but there are requirements. There is a requirement to submit an application. There is a requirement to for uh, checks to be conducted with the different databases to see if an individual is uh, convicted of a felony crime uh, or a crime that would forbid him or her from possess owning or possessing a firearm. So again, I don't have the regulation to cite in front of me right now, but um, because he is a registered, the, the firearm was legally registered mm -hmm. and it was registered to Mr. Sagdal, that leads us to believe uh, that the checks were conducted and that he was within uh, the confines of the law to be able to possess, own and possess a firearm. Um, owning and possess and possessing a firearm um, is one license, correct? Um, now, there is also a license to carry a concealed weapon. Yes. Um, does Mr. Sagdal have that license to carry? We do not believe that he does. But again, we're, we're still conducting our investigation to determine whether Mr. Sagdal has been issued or has been, has applied for a concealed firearms ID. Okay. Uh, Ragdal appeared to sustain some injuries in the mugshot. Uh, do you know if that was sustained with a confrontation from police? Or Th that is what we are trying to ascertain. We don't know uh, specifically or definitively how he sustained those injuries, but those are those. That's all that we are trying to uh, determine through the investigation. Is this specific area, aside from the Hemlani Harmon apartment, is this a troublesome area for the Guam Police Department? Um, that specific area where the incident occurred, I would say, is not necessarily a troublesome area. It was at the intersection of East Titan Road and Route 16 Army Drive. That area is, is not necessarily a what we would call a problematic area. Uh, and um, again, the Hamlani Apartments, uh, you know, understanding that in the past we have dealt with some issues, but I think we're working uh, with the the owners, the landlord of um, the Milani Apartments, as well as the residents, to keep that area safe. There's been a lot of of uh, positive results with the apartment watch complex watch uh, programs that we've had. We've gone into the Milani Apartments on two separate occasions to talk to the individuals there. So we are confident that in working with the residents of the Milani's, that the the residents themselves are are you know, doing what they have to do, taking, uh, taking part in, in being, um, you know, active, good citizens in, uh, as, as residents of the apartment. Um, again, we are, the, the investigation continues to go forward to determine exactly what happened uh, so that uh, we, can, we can bring closure to this case. Okay. Um, Chief, yes. uh, there were some reports that um, the, the guys that got shot um, were, might have been using slingshots. Was, were they doing that? Uh, that again, we are trying to determine exactly, um, you know, what what happened moments prior to that, because that is very critical to to the case itself. What happened right before that 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 led up to that incident of the shooting. So all that we are trying to determine, uh, and and once we get that information and we are able to release that information, uh, we'll be able to provide that. Do you know if that's an issue in the area? People using um, slingshots. To well, we've heard of uh, that type of incident happening where um, individuals would be using slingshots, whether it's a, uh, a tactic that's employed there in the past, that's something that we're taking a look at. I can't say definitively if that's something that we see a lot. This is, the, this is one of the first incidences that we've heard of, of this type of incident arising. Again, uh, we're, we're not saying that, that a slingshot was used. We're not confirming that, that information. All that is being conducted, or we're determining that as we conduct our follow-up investigations. Well, what, what type of, if you can say, what type of slingshot was it? Because um, a normal slingshot is just a piece of stick, some rubber, and some whatever it is. So do, do you know if they're shooting rocks or 
again, we don't know that. We're, we're, the, the interviews are ongoing as we speak. This is something that our detectives have been uh, working on uh, since the incident first occurred. Uh, we did have some detectives that were on duty. So from the moment we received the call, um, this was not something that was just initiated by our patrol officers, although many of them were on the scene. This is something that our criminal investigations division has been part of at the onset uh, because there were detectives on duty at the time the incident occurred. So again, to answer your question directly, that's something that we're taking a look at. I don't have the specifics uh, of whether there was a slingshot there that was used and, and the type of slingshot that was used if it was in fact used during that incident earlier to the shooting occurred. Has the that, other victim that, um, the other victim, is he it, about the same age as the first victim identified by the ME? We believe, uh, again, I, I don't have the specifics of the ages of the, the victims, uh, but we believe that uh, they are approximately in the same age group. Has the suspect claimed self-defense? Uh, again, uh, based on what my detectives have briefed me, he has, he has not made any of those kinds of assertions. Um, the vehicles that were uh, at the scene, they were facing opposite directions. Um, is that an indication that this altercation began in the car and a possible shooting began, uh, that the suspect possibly shot from his vehicle? Again, the, the follow-up investigation is still being conducted. Those, so the specifics of the way vehicles were positioned, how the vehicles were used, just prior to the, the, the shooting occurring, all that we are trying to determine. So it would really be very premature for me to make any of those kinds of, uh, provide any of that kind of information, uh, not knowing exactly what's going on as my officers are still trying to determine exactly what happened. Uh, we saw Ragdoll at the scene today with a bunch of uh, officers, mm -hmm. some detectives. Can you tell us what they were doing at that scene? Well, obviously, you know, we the, the officers uh, were conducting an investigation, so there were some prelimi preliminary questioning uh, that was being uh, that was being done, um, and and those are all standard questions. Those are all uh, that standard police work that's being conducted at the time the the incident occurred, and as things are beginning to evolve. Um, so I will tell you that what you saw at the scene and what was captured at the scene, those images and whatever videos that are out there captured by the media. Is, is standard protocol, standard police work uh, being conducted at uh, incidences such as this. Red dog's being cooperative then? We, yes, at this point in time, he is cooperating with the investigation. Okay. Is there any more questions from the, the gentleman over there? So if there's no questions, thank you very much for your time this afternoon. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so if you're just tuning in, that was a press conference. Uh, that was a press conference here at the chief's office here in Teton. More information, or rather, a uh, kind of like a summary of what happened last night. Again, they're still putting together the pieces. We do have a 24-year-old man from Jigo, Joseph Segdal. He is in custody, police custody right now. He's expected to make his first court appearance tomorrow afternoon already if you go on to KUAM we've identified that first victim for you that's an 18 year old Okuru high school student his name is Broki Tomasu uh, again he died from a gunshot wound to the head the, the manner of death has been ruled a homicide um, you can rewatch you can rewind if you want to uh, the chief basically said that the shots fired uh, there's a single male suspect, not a random act of violence. Basically saying this was not an ethnically based or racially based kind of crime. Either a handgun was re uh, confiscated from the scene. Again, this handgun was registered to Mr. Sagdahl. We don't have an ID on the second victim yet. It is about to rain. You can catch the full story on KUAM tonight.